Keith Hillier and uh, Max Pearsall, great to see both of you. Keith, the, David's comeback after a dreadful accident at the trials at Mooney Valley has been one of the great stories of this spring carnival. It sure has, Bruce. Uh, I think it was uh, mid-January that David had an horrendous fall at Mooney Valley when a horse turned back at a trial. David was slammed into a brick wall and if we, we listed David's injuries, we'd be here till next week. David, it surely threatened your career. It did, Keith. Uh, I was contemplating my future at the time and... Uh... I mean, I got a bit lazy during the seven months doing rehabilitation and that, but uh, I thought I'll make a comeback, and uh, it's it's proved proved well. Don't list them all, but give us the main injuries that you suffered. Well, the main main injuries I suffered, Bruce, was uh, a broken jaw, and I split the kneecap in half, and uh, that was the main worry was the kneecap. But I still have treatment on it, and uh, I mean, it's getting there. Bruce, I'd like to... Bionic men. I was going to be... Wouldn't it be dreadful well, if Max broke his jaw? He wouldn't be able to yeah. talk for a week or two. <laughs> but no, Wayne Harris with the cup. Yeah, well, Bruce, I'd put it to you because of your knowledge of all-round sport, but uh, do you know any more hazardous profession than being a jockey? Do you know of any sportsmen that are tougher, that can come back after adversity, than jockeys? Well, I mean, if it went into great depth, there'd be other sports that could probably match, but I think with... Taggart and Harris have been perfect examples in the last week of the courage of riders and uh, the adversity they have to go through to reach the top. And David is a tremendous story, as is Wayne Harris, isn't he? Yeah, and as is uh, David Hayes, surely after this week, Bruce, uh, four main days of racing, David Hayes captured the plum on three occasions. Yeah, three group ones. He really has had a terrific week. Let's look at the Nissan and, and tell us about this win of Seas case. I guess there were a couple of, uh, unfortunately, poor play or pay broke down and has been destroyed. Um, Monsieur leading, um, Seascape coming with a run. Arboria did get absolutely flattened at the 300, and ta a State Targe never really got out, did he? Right on both occasions. Arboria almost fell. David, uh, Damien Oliver, after the race, uh, apologised. He said, I slaughtered ta State Targe, but don't think it was his fault, really. Kid, I guess the key well, here... Well, was it, Kid? Well, he just couldn't get a crack at them. Well, he's blaming himself. The owner wouldn't accept uh, Damien's apology. Well, we should well, have a look here, the too. the owner blaming Damien? Max, Ma do, do you mind me interrupting for a moment? There was a protest here. Seascape running in on idea and uh, the eloquent uh, Alf Matthews who will be along a little later got into there with uh, David Taggart and you kept this protest David you must be the only bloke that's ever beaten Alfie in the in the stewards room yeah he sounds like gold belly doesn't he <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> tell us about it you did drift in I, I drifted in I, I gave him a bump at the at the 300 I just shaved him and his horse got away but right on the line I, I shaved him again it was one stride prior to the post and the race was already over at that stage and uh I mean, I'm in the steward's room, and I didn't want to say much because the more you say, the more you get, set, you get yourself in the trouble. <laughs> and uh, and Alf is going. That's Gerard Allfield. <laughs> uh, Rodney Griffiths knows all about that on television, doesn't it? And, and Alfie was going on a bit, and I was thinking, you know, oh, come on, Alf, let's just watch the, the steward's film and get, over, get it over with. Well, how um, long did the protest last? Oh, five minutes. <laughs> no, Alf, so, Alfie, did, out the Alfie did say a lot. But uh, certainly the, the, steward, uh, the steward's film didn't support Alfie at all. Uh, he, he was very uh, verbose about it. He made a lot of points. But when it went up on the board, it just wasn't there. Yeah, the it wasn't Alf's wasn't day in the last race, late. which we won't see on, on uh, film. Shaman uh, a pigeon hit Alf in the face, landed in his lap, and he's riding the favourite, having to shoo the pigeon <laughs> off his lap. How'd you get the ride for David Hayes? That's uh, an unusual uh, riding well, engagement, to well, be honest. Well, Gary Fantasy rang up the boss... Uh, Monday for Seascan and the boss got straight on to me and uh, we we looked through the, the fields of the Nissan and uh, there was no regular horse that I ride and, and we rang him back and accepted the ride and it, and it paid dividends, it was great. Good on you. Max, uh, sorry for interrupting you, let us know about mm. that in the commercial break because I'm sure it was interesting what you were going to say. No, I'm uh, just interested to know why Keith Hillier is making so many excuses for Damien Oliver actually, Keith... and yet he, all he wanted to do was bag, <laughs> bag, bag, bag poor Jackie well, Jay last week so he ran a damn side better. Max, I'm going to interrupt again, I want to take that up with you too but not in this race. Let's have a look at the Queen Elizabeth, Paul right. Winkle, because I want to have a go at you about something in a minute. Oh, Keith, um, so Get nervous. Uh, Bullwinkle, what do you make of this, Keith? Can't speak. The nerves have got to me. This is a very good win. Uh, trainer Mick Kent uh, had to make a decision whether to run Bullwinkle in the Melbourne Cup or save him for this. Uh, he just never had a runner in the Melbourne Cup, so it was a tough decision. Paid dividends, too. Bullwinkle, uh, a stay of the future, surely. It was only his 14th start yesterday. It was a real staying if it wasn't. I mean, everyone had a chance to beat him in the straight. I guess Dark Tsar was a bit disappointing. And Irish Lord, I really like Max. Like you before the go, he probably needed a bit more 
or smother? No, nah, he, he, Irish Rort was a little bit disappointing. I think they're all disappointing. I think they're definitely second grade stayers. I think they went to the line uh, about as quick as you'd kick a hat. Yeah, well, listen, Keith. Um, Brian Martin, who I respect as a race caller, uh, listening to him on the tranny yesterday, um, Doremus, Damien Oliver. He was three wide because he wanted better going. Now, he's three wide on Doremus all the way, like poor old Mick Kinane, who everyone's been bagging. Oh, don't tell me you're Mick Kinane, looking, man. Looking don't tell me you're Mick Kinane, man, really. Let's, let, one let's have best, it. One of the best riders in the world, without oh, any question. Now, and he put in one of the worst in the world well, on Tuesday. OK, well, is Dermot well, a good right. trainer? Let, let's go to this race. Doremus, he hits the front too soon. He's covered a heap of ground. He wins the race, and everyone reckons he's a genius. Well, I don't know why it was a genius at all, but I'll tell you what. Had it got beaten, you'd say it was a very poor ride, wouldn't you? It's a ri yeah, it wasn't a good ride at all, but it's a super horse, Doremus. A super horse? It's a very good horse. Not can let no, I won't tell you a secret. I, want I don't want you to know that Lee Friedman thinks it's the best horse in the stable. So I won't well, can we look at the Better facts here? Lane and Mahogany. Can you we look at the joke. facts here now? Potential, Put potential, that on tape potential, next potential, year. Bruce, potential. That beat Cedo Bridge. Two starts back, Cedo Bridge was was beaten in a group six at Geelong. On the face value, you could only say Doremus is an up-and-coming horse, but Doremus has got something special, and I do think he's a horse of... You're right, Max. Potential. To be honest with you, I agree with you completely. I love the horse. Do you? Yeah, Not I, another one. Gee, he's going to have to be good to carry you. <laughs> what do you think, David? Doremus, mm -hmm. he's, a, he's a very smart horse, very talented horse. Uh, I think it was Lee Friedman's best hope in the Melbourne Cup, but he sort of... Never had the right preparation for it. Wouldn't have that been exciting? We might have seen a horse in the Melbourne Cup this year with six starts under his belt. And look, I, Lee talks to me every now and then too, Keith. And he, yes. he's whispered a couple of things to me about the horse too. Gee, he's hard to get right. a chat. What did he say? Uh, he didn't say he's the best horse in the stable, but he... Oh, potentially. It's a best. secret what he told yeah, me. Right. Um, Northwood Plume, she was impressive. This was a great ride by Oliver. It was too. Yeah, she was. She did have the form too uh, with hindsight through the Derby winner, Blevick. She raced competitive, uh, competitively against uh, the Colts and Geldings and back to the Phillies. Well, she won uh, the Thousand Guineas and she's very strong here at the Phillies. Well, she's won the two group ones in Melbourne and interestingly she didn't use the wakeful, which generally has been the one, hasn't it? Sure. And uh, Captiva did get flattened at the mile. It was a yes. good run, but the best filly. And I love this filly. She's got a lot to, to like in the mounting out and she probably is better than mannerism at the one at the same age and probably would be a Caulfield Cup champion. OK, for some reason Damien Oliver's riding is dominating the conversation today. This was the perfect ride. On state targe, he never got a crack at them. I don't know whether it was his fault or the run of the race, but this is copybook stuff. Dan Arani, uh, Max? Oh, Dan Arani's trained off a shade, had a, had a bit of, struck a bit of trouble in the Oaks and will do better. Will be a worthy rival, I feel, for Northwood Plume in the autumn. But just back to Damien Oliver, that's why Damien Oliver is the best jockey in Australia, Northwood Plume. He didn't ride the other horse, State Targe. Well, that's life, that's racing, that's even, even great riders can have, a, have an off-ride. And certainly I think State Targe was probably Damien's. A bit like Michael Canane, just one off-ride every now and then. But we can always be a victim of circumstance too, Bruce. Yeah, Good on you, Damien. Yeah, no, well, Absolutely. I mean, I've been a bit disappointed with it. What Canane... We'll talk about this more in the Melbourne Cup, but what Canane has had to put up with, because this is one of oh. the great riders of the world, and aren't everyone has wanted to bag to say, him. No, but aren't we entitled to say, Bruce, that he's ridden a bad race? He Why, did because race. he is regarded as the great rider in the world, is he entitled to some sort of diplomatic no, immunity? But but just because he's ridden one bad race doesn't mean he can't ride. And I oh, would no. rather... No, there's on never, that never no. that inference. Never that inference. Oh, no, Keith, there has been that inference that our jockeys are superior and why those yeah. jockeys shouldn't ride in Melbourne. Look, let's go to the Linlithgow. Why didn't the VRC decide to put the stalls on the outside for the Linlithgow? Look at Scalacci and Kiltries, and yesterday we've seen it, and all through the carnival, David, the outside has been so superior. Why not just put the stalls on the outside fence, and if you draw one, you go alongside the outside? It's a tough statement you've made, uh... Well, it would have made it much simpler. It, it's, it's I mean, much easier, had... yes, but, I mean, say if there was a field of 24, I mean, you've drawn six, you don't go to the outside, do you? It happened yesterday, fair enough. I mean, but after four days of racing, who well, wouldn't go to the outside? Well, it was the same on Saturday when Ariba, that was Sequale, by the way, beating Ariba. There's the same on Saturday. Ariba yeah. was just a super horse to You'd win You'd have to get Saturday. general agreement, though, wouldn't you, for the whole field to want to transfer? Oh, well, true. in a small field like the Linlithgow, only seven or eight started. I said this before the go. I remember I rang UN Max about this. Mm. I was quite interested in why they wouldn't put the barrier stalls on the outside fence for the Linlithgow and tell everyone on Tuesday afternoon going into Thursday. Well, the club really has not officially conceded that the outside is faster. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you are joking. Well, it hasn't. 
Uh, David, 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 what was the difference between the outside and the inside in lengths? You, sometimes you miss here, Bruce. I said the club hasn't conceded. You know it was faster. Even Max knows it was faster. Do you, do, even you, do you know it was faster? Of course I do. <laughs> David, how much faster? There was probably four or five lengths in it, especially getting on the course proper. Uh, on the inside, that's where uh, it was four days of racing. It's where it sort of, sort of got a bit chopped up. Whereas the outside, there was probably only half a dozen races on it. There's the voice of reason. Yeah, no, it's good. That's why we get people in like that, Max. David, David, well done, David. Terrific carnival. Thank you, Bruce. Keep kicking those winners Just home. 21st next Thursday, too. Oh, is it? Congratulations. Yeah. End of an apprenticeship. Oh, that's terrific. Yeah, congratulations, David. Thank you. Thanks, boys. Um, Max and Keith, come back. A preview of the Melbourne Cup. Kate, if you're listening, Jern won it, by the way. Written by Wayne Harris at 16 to 1 and trained by David Hayes. We all knew that, Keith. What I a... didn't, Bruce. Had a rusted day off. <laughs> you had the day off, did you? <laughs> That's not true at all. He was well back, June. And David Hayes and Wayne Harris and Alf Matthews are our special guests for different reasons. David and Wayne because they won the Cup and Alf because of an article particularly that he wrote, which was most interesting during the week. Welcome to all of you. And we're just chatting a moment ago. I think it is the one race in Australian racing that does change your life. David, uh, you were quoted during the week. When people don't know much about racing, they come up and say, how many Melbourne Cups have you won? And really, if you haven't won one, you haven't quite done it. And for you, Wayne, you won a golden slipper as a young man, but I'm sure that it wasn't quite the same reaction to having won this Melbourne Cup. No, I think, you know, the, the, well, the world, it's a worldwide race now, you know. It used to be just Australia stopped for the Melbourne Cup, but now we have the international horses running. There's a national flavour there, so like the world's starting to stop for the Melbourne Cup. Everyone knows... Uh, the Melbourne Cup winners. Wayne, two or three days before the race, you were even contemplating going back to Sydney because there was little prospect of a ride. After the race, have you counted or could you count how many congratulatory phone calls, faxes you've received? I couldn't received? count them. The fax machine ran out of paper. The phone just has not stopped. It's, it's really good. People that I, you know, they don't, there was no need for them to call me, but they called me and it was a very popular win and it's good to know that you've got good friends out there that think that much of you. And David, from your point of view, you've only been training for four seasons, but do you feel like the monkey's off your back really quickly? Dad had to wait nearly 30 years before he won his first Melbourne Cup. That was a point Dad said. He said, I had to wait 30 years. It was my hoodoo race. He said, I had great horses break down, die, and it falsified, died. And he said, uh, one thing Dad did say to me, well, you've, you've done that now, and, and it's behind you, and uh, get on with the next ones, but it'll be a lot easier. I think uh, to Keith and Max, uh, particularly as journalists, Lee Friedman and David Hayes are doing so much for Australian racing. It's uh, the great rivalry, and now they're on an even kill. Uh, I thought Lee had a little edge because he'd won two Melbourne Cups, and suddenly, I mean, you probably disagree here, though, suddenly they're square, back to square one, and they're head and head. Yeah, I remember, just back to David's comment about his dad, C.S., when the, uh, the, the years started to widen without a Melbourne Cup success, he was saying, oh, I've won derbies and Cox Plates, and they're the classics, and... But when he won his first Melbourne Cup, he said, that's the best race in the land. You know? <laughs> but you're right about the I, young lion. I regard, uh, regard it as a privilege to have had worked in the era of Tommy Smith, of Bart Cummings, and of course, Colin Hayes. But by gee, this other pair are good too. They're yeah. going to be right up there with them. And they're going to be around for a few years. They're only young fellows. Let's go to the race. Uh, Jern, uh, magnificent ride, Wayne. And Alfie, you're on Grass Valley because you were able to... Uh, chat with Wayne throughout the race. Well, Wayne, take us through it a bit. Um, and you, you said you missed the start and in a way it was a blessing in disguise for you. Yeah, we didn't really chat. Alf sort of had a few choice words to say to me. <laughs> well, well, tell us about that, Alf. Oh, Bruce, look, from about the 1300 metre mark onwards, I just uh, expressed myself to Wayne, um, could I please have just a little more galloping room? <laughs> <laughs> You're on Grass Valley. It had a great run, Grass Valley. Then the key to June, uh, David and Wayne, was going to be whether or not he would settle down early. Yeah, you know, the, the worry was the two mile and whether he whether he would settle, but uh, it looked like that he, he could have been over racing a bit, but I think the horses in front of me were sort of kept coming back on me. I had to keep sort of dragging him back off them, but really he settled quite well. There's a top weight and favourite in the yellow, midfield and out wide already. Vintage crop, yeah. We'll talk about Michael Kinane's uh, ride a little later. We'll show you part of the Stewart's film. David, uh, June, now, the situation with him, you were changed some gear from the McKinnon stakes. If a horse has never run beyond a mile and a half, 2,400, I guess you don't know whether he's going to stay or not either. We, we, you know, we're all guessing a little bit into the race, and the, as Wayne said, the key to the horse was to get him to settle. Uh, we put blinkers on and pacifies after the uh, Cox Plate because we felt that the horse uh, didn't have the dip. Uh, then he fired up a little bit too much. I felt he over-raced 
for a Melbourne Cup prospect. And so I took the blinkers off, left the pacifiers on the horse, and they did the trick. It made him very genuine, and uh, he was quite brilliant, actually, the way it accelerated. You thought the horse got, um, I guess, horny would be the word in the cox play. <laughs> five did. legs, I think, was the description. <laughs> five legs, he did, saddling him up. Um, <laughs> I thought he sprained his ankle, but, <laughs> but uh, he got very excited, cox play day. Um, he's got a, he, he likes greys, I suppose he's the equivalent of blondes in our sort of <laughs> thoughts. But uh, he's got a, he, he uh, got very amorous, and uh, I think it, it, it might have been one of the contributing factors that went against him. Well, this is where, Alfie, you're starting to abuse Wayne at this stage. Wayne, uh, June, uh, uh, gossips goes through on the fence, and you go yeah, with yeah. Uh, with gossips on June here, don't you? Yeah, I, you know, I was pretty lucky. A couple of horses took me into the race when, when I needed to, and uh, um, I could hear a voice behind me telling me in no uncertain manner where I should be going and what I should be doing. And uh, I, I didn't really know it was Alf until we come back. And after the last race, I was waiting for someone to abuse me and Alf come up and said that was me. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, of course, one of the keys to the race was just before the turn and on the turn because June went from probably 10th position with a wall of horses. He got a wonderful run through and the horse was brave enough to take the run. And I thought his acceleration at the furlong and a half was really exciting. Oh, it, was, it was terrific, really. Like There's a few horses there that looked like they're going to start dropping back and I think a few of the jockeys sort of panicked a bit and tried to get around them. And I was pretty lucky that I weaved my way through them and... Uh, yeah, it's this is now. where the horse showed his, uh, his guts and determination. Wider on the track, you've got Paris Lane and Vintage Crop having their bumping duel. That distracted many. Both were favoured runners. And in that time, Jern slipped through and put the cup in the bag. David, your feelings here. You've got four runners. Top rating was the fancied one. Jern sprinted away two links in front. Yes, uh, I was, you know, of course, all attention on the leader at this stage. But uh, I've got to be honest a lot. For most of the race, I was watching um, top rating um, the father's horse. Um, and uh, he just didn't accelerate on the ground, and the other two didn't have the best of runs. Can I ask you about top rating? Usually one, a horse only gets one crack at the Melbourne Cup. The real special ones get two. He'll probably get weighted. He won't get such a good weight. Has he had his one and only chance to win a Melbourne Cup? Oh, I, yeah, if he stays on his legs, uh, these Nassau pores get better with age. He'll be seven, he'll probably have 56 kilos. Yeah, he'll have to be pretty good, won't he? Dave, can I ask you something? Are you aware that a punting supporter of your stable won half a million dollars, one out, on June in the Melbourne Cup? Uh, no, I was not aware. Uh, but uh, that's great news, and I, wish, I hope he makes himself known to me. <laughs> David, uh, congratulations on a fine training performance. You've let us know how you've overcome all these disabilities that Jern had, including uh, uh, something that Keith uh, Hillier obviously suffers from considerably. <laughs> but uh, that, the... the only one that I can think of that may have been comparable was Mick Gitman on Gurners Lane getting up and beating Kingston Town that day. And Mick got rubbed out for that one. Wayne didn't get rubbed out for he, this one. He showed a bit more style, Wayne, didn't he? <laughs> the steward squared up yesterday. They got me for three weeks yesterday. <laughs> Look, can we, poor Rodney Griffiths. He's had a wonderful spring. We asked him, we have to play this, we asked him last Sunday, he's ridden Jern to success in big races, whether or not Jern could win the Melbourne Cup. Do you think Jern could win a Melbourne Cup? No. No hope. No hope? No hope. <laughs> won't, won't stay two more. That's why you're not riding him? That's correct, yeah. Okay, good. Now, don't worry about that because this time last year, Rod, they played a shot of me saying that I would rather back Mick Dittman than Mick Kinane, but they've lost it this year. Now, we look for that. Alf Matthews, your article, I want to take a couple of quotes from it, uh, from the Melbourne Age during the week. Willie Carson, in this article that Alf wrote, uh, says, and another thing, Alf, your race callers keep saying so-and-so's three wide, so-and-so's four wide, no wonder the punters want to rip the stand down. We're talking about Alf's criticism of Michael Canane's ride on Vintage Crop. We look at what Alf said at the, the end of his uh, article. I still remain puzzled at Canane's ride and his tactics. One thing I'm certain of is that international horses may well be superior in some areas. Their riders certainly are not. I think you said that if you'd ridden a similar race, you'd be at Port Lincoln next year. Let's look at the stewards film for a little bit of it and see how wide Kinane was and our, for your thoughts on, on what happened here. Here he is, widest on the track. This is at about the 1,700 metres. Bruce, look, I obviously believed that he had no race plan whatsoever. Bear in mind he drew barrier five last year and he was probably kept closer to the running rail than perhaps he really wanted to be. But he's, he's just, he's, he's in the land of, of no one, you know. We're, we're, not, we're well aware of the fact that he hadn't spent a lot of time in Australia and how much of it he wanted to see, you know, remains to be seen. But th there was obviously no race plan, there was no purpose in his ride, and clearly th there was um, just... Well, no you're saying it was an awful ride, but one awful ride doesn't make one awful jockey. Wayne oh, Harris, no. you've ridden 
in Ireland extensively. And your thoughts on overseas jockeys? I don't know what everyone's going on about. I thought it was a great by, ride by Canard. <laughs> it's terrific. <laughs> Keith, you've been inundated with calls this week. Well, I, I thought uh, Mick Canane, who was an outstanding and world-recognised jockey, rode the wrong race for our tracks, that you uh, you can't win a Melbourne Cup over 3,200 metres by taking your horse over a 3,400 metre trip. It's a difficult area, Alf, when you're a jockey criticising other jockeys. I mean, is there an un... I thought there might have been an unwritten law between hoops. Well, look, I took on a commitment with the age, you know, to, to write certain articles, and uh, I got a responsibility to them. And, uh, you know, clearly I was going to do what I felt I had to do. And it was clearly the topic of the moment when he came in. Like, you know, we wouldn't have got down past the roses if we'd have ridden a horse like that. As I say, there was no purpose in his ride and, you know, for him to cover as much ground as he did. You know, Bruce, it's, it's just, not the done thing. Just a question to Alf. Alf, <clears throat> the horse had a setback. Uh, Kinane told me he was out there because the horse wasn't going well enough. Do you place any relevance in that? Well, no, I don't, because of the simple fact that the horse still performed probably as well as it did last year. It was a super run. Oh, it's it? incredible. Look, yeah. it's carried six and a half kilos. It's never been near the fence at all. And it still had the decency to run, and run on. Like, oh, what a heart. Well, Wayne, congratulations to you and David. Uh, just uh, the best week possible to, for both of you. And, uh, and uh, Keith and Max, thanks for everything leading up to the Melbourne Cup and we'll still be going. Well, this will be a Melbourne Cup to be remembered. Uh, uh, first for David Hayes and uh, uh, I think it was won by the most popular jockey in Australia for many reasons, Wayne, and you'll never forget it. Thanks, Keith. Good on you. And Max, uh, we'll catch... Max, we're going to give you two weeks off. Oh, that's good. I've been sent out to the spelling paddock. I've been suspended like W. Harris. <laughs> <laughs> it's great to be in that company anyway.